Matuska, and uh, I'm here with the Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company, along with Mandy Swart, our producer, Brett Wingfield, our resident artist, and our camera girl, Kirsten. Kirsten. And uh, last week, we touched briefly on fish bodies, on how to, how to order um, commercial fish bodies, and we spent quite a bit of time on pattern making, and Brett showed you how to take a largemouth bass and make a pattern. And I think when we left you, um, we had cut out the profile of the fish, and when you signed off last week, it was something about like this, and uh, he's gonna show you how to turn that block of foam which just has the side profile cut out of it, how to put a curve into it and give some fish um, some action. The best thing with carving your own bodies is you are uh, responsible for the curve, the action. Um, you can customize your poses. Um, you can be a lot more creative than you can with a commercial body. So I'm gonna turn it over to Brett and he's gonna take it from where he left off last week. Cool. So we're just gonna pick up where we left off. Um, but I'll recap really fast, um, just a couple things. Last week we, we made a pattern on butcher paper um, and we took height, height measurement, a width measurement, and a circumference measurement of the actual fish. We laid him down on paper and we posed him exactly how we wanted him. So today we're gonna transfer those measurements onto this block of foam, which we've already cut. We've made one pass to cut the profile out of a square block. So we started with something like this and transferred the body pattern onto here and then passed it through the bandsaw to cut out the profile. Thank you. Um, now, we're gonna decide exactly what this fish is gonna be doing. Um, and we can do anything from, Tom, I think you call it a head and tail out, a conventional curve, a C curve. When I started, we used to carve these out of granite. And <laughs> it was like, <laughs> with a chisel, like, it was yeah. hard. <laughs> Cavemen used to chisel, you know, tablets. Um, but we used to uh, have to come up with a term. And when I started, everybody put the head and the tail out. So I referred to it as a conventional curve. Um, when I started doing opposite of that, head and tail in, I call it a reverse curve, and then I have a S curve head out, yeah. S curve head in. Um, you just have to come up with the terminology that you and your customers can both relate to. Yeah. I believe in our commercial fish bodies, we have an S curve, predominantly S curves. We've got a couple C curves. Um, and this is an S curve. Yeah. So S being the shape of the spine of the body. Now this can be mounted like this with the head out, or it makes a really attractive head and in and a tail out. Yep. And there are some advantages to going head in and tail out um, in your mounting bracket as well. We can talk about that in the mm -hmm. week. Um, but for this fish, we know we've got him, we've got him face, head to his right. Um, I think we're gonna put the head out, and we're gonna make a line that would represent the spine of the body. So, we're gonna give that a little bit of an S shape, starting here at the top of the head. We know fish really don't have a neck, so they don't have a lot of ability to, to turn up in the, in the front portion of their body. Um, most of their movement occurs uh, behind their reproductive system or their, uh, behind their digestive tract. Um, so we're going to put more curve back here, or more action in the fish, and here through the dorsal portion and the caudal portion is where we're going to see a little bit more action. So we're going to do something just like this, and let that determine our center line. So notice the head is out from the wall, the tail is in if this is the wall side. And it works real good if you have your fish laying here you can turn him and he will bend gracefully what he can do in real life. And if you are forcing him and cranking him, um, it's a good chance he couldn't have done that in real life either. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it is a good idea, we should mention now, you can also take a top pattern, a top tracing of the fish to help you determine what this shape looks like. Um, we've chosen not to, um, with a small amount of curve, we're not going to elongate or distort the shape of the fish too much, so we'll just start from here. Um, the next step we have to do 
We took some really good width measurements of the fish. If you remember, we kind of stood him up on his side about like so. And then we took the calipers and we measured width. And so from that measurement, which we have represented here, Upside down. Upside down. <laughs> I saw that. Um, here, uh, we're going to transfer those up to our, our spinal measurement. Maybe I cut it that wrong for you. No, that was our last week. So, um, this fish was a post spawn fish. It was pretty, if you remember, it was pretty thick and heavy in the head. And so, our largest measurement occurs a little further forward than um, you'll see. So, I've just got a steel tape measure here or yardstick um, to take some measurements off of. That'll help me. I've got three and three eighths, and I'm going to use a pair of six inch calipers, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to use those to transfer measurements. So three and three eighths, I'm going to put up here. Now if you'll watch, I'm going to put those, those calipers up to transfer that width measurement, and when I do, that measurement is going to occur perpendicular to the spinal column. Three and an eighth. Um, one right here. We're going to go down the whole length of the fish and put these measurements on there. We had probably, I think we had more views last week than we've had any other week, didn't we? Yeah, we were a little yeah. concerned about it because people were, you know, writing in saying they weren't. Yeah, just as that. interested in fish, you know. Yeah, you fish guys were, were watching. That's pretty cool. And we got a lot of fun people saying hi. These are like our, our fans that watch every week. John Cranford, hello. Ann Van Epps Nafer, hello. Randy Wold, hello again. Brian Billings, hello. Doug Dexter, good afternoon. Joe Martin, Martin's taxidermy is here. Derek Harriman, hello, Brett. Dan Williams, hello. Um... Ernest King, good evening, Ernie with Ernie's Tax Ernie, Jacksonville, North Carolina, checking in. Wow. That's fun seeing all those. Yeah. It is. Tom and Jelzma. Tom and Brett, love your lives. This is Sioux City. Sioux City, <laughs> tell me how many other cities Brett has. <laughs> That's Sioux City. Tom. Brett. What? Uh -huh. Gannon Ridge so. Tax Ernie, hello. So what we're going to do now, we've got all of these measurements here, and we're just going to start playing connect the dots. Just like so. Fish are real flowing and smooth, so if you have corners where you connect your dots, just smooth them out. Just something like that. So that should give us our basic shape all the way down the fish, okay? You might have to help when you cut this on the pants. Smooth me out a little bit. I was trying to do it upside down. Beautiful. It's easier to cut it smooth on the bandsaw than it is to dry. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to give this to Tom, and because this body is a little taller, um, we're going to have to cut this out on a deeper throated bandsaw. Our other one is six inches. This is about six and eight. See? I can do it. And safety first. I'm going to put on my safety glasses. <laughs> there you go. So gonna we got Jeff Needham. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jeff Needham from Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Terry Goodoy. Hi guys. Love this. Now, which you can't see, but it's kind of, kind of pretty important for you know some of us. Uh, so, um, 
Tom did the instant cut on the bandsaw, cut out both of those lines. So now we have an exact replica of the width of the fish, but he's pretty square. Not gonna fit very good um, going like so. The fawn's Matuska. <laughs> <laughs> um, so same, same age. <laughs> So there's a few a few things we're gonna do before we start um, before we start carving. Do you want to show them on the board, um, kind of some of the principles of what we're gonna start? Okay. Um, if you'll notice, like you said, we have a square fish. We have the curve cut in. We have the side profile cut, profile cut in. But we've got 90 degree corners. We need to turn that block of foam into the shape of the fish. Now we don't have the deceased fish laying here, but if we did, we would. it's really nice to have him there so you can uh, kind of refer to him and see where he's tapered, where he's rounded. Yeah. And in the step-by-step -step process of this, um, we would choose to leave the fish whole, carve the body to at least rough carve it, and then we'll come back and skin the fish and test fit him against the rough carved body. So just so we have something to refer against and we, that's how we start all of our students. So basically what you have now is you have a rectangle of foam as you look at it from the front. What you need is a fish shape and you want to study that fish shape a little bit. Large mouth typically are a little more tapered on the, on the top, a little more rounded on the belly. <clears throat> now, if you cut your foam out real carefully, if you drew it carefully and cut it out on a bandsaw carefully, if that fish was, what was your widest part of that fish? Three and three eighths. This should be three and three eighths, and I think you had like six and an eighth on the top? Yep. And it should be six and an eighth. So a lot of people think that when they have their fish body, it measures perfectly three and a half, eighth inches wide by six and eighth inches high and it doesn't fit, they can't figure out why. It's because you haven't checked your circumference yet. So what Brett's gonna do is take a corner off, take a corner off, take a corner off, take a corner off. Now you're starting to get a little more away from the square part and you're gonna have a piece of foam that looks like this. Little by little, by taking these corners off, checking your measurements, checking your circumference, you're going to eventually come up with a large mouth bass shape. So if you will go ahead and yeah. Yeah. we'll turn this over. I mean, you he's going to be a sculptor. You are a sculptor when you're carving foam. So we're going to turn this over to um, Fischl Angelo here. <laughs> um, the first thing we're going to have to do, if you notice, this, this area here indicates the base of the head you can see it's not perpendicular to the spine. So we're gonna have to square this up. And, and this is a place where students will tend to have, have trouble in elongating their fish because this isn't, they haven't squared this up. So the first thing we'll do here is transfer that. We're also gonna bring this back to square. We're also gonna bring the throat latch back to square and the interior of the mouth which is throat through here. So I'm just gonna do that real quick um, by taking a depth cut there and here. I'll just pop that piece out. And then this, which is the shelf we built to set the skull on. We'll take that out. And we're also going to square up the throat. And if you can see here, this depth versus this depth, we've also got to do the same thing on the inside there. So we're just going to bring those back just a little bit more. If you're new to carving fish um, and want to get started, uh, get yourself a, a piece of foam and start with a little fish. Don't, don't start with a 30 pound muskie or pike or something like that. Um, start with smaller fish, bluegill and perch, and see how exact you can make those bodies and uh, get them to fit. Um, if you haven't done them before, it does take practice, and little by little you work the bugs out of your system until you know they'll fit it when you get done carving. Yeah. 
and, and fish carving is. It's just practice, mm -hmm. practice, practice, practice. Um, there's a couple other things that I want to do before I get started, and one of them, I'm going to draw a line, and I'm going to put that at, basically at the widest part of the fish. So I know that if I carve that line away, my fish is going to be too skinny because we know we took a width, an accurate width measurement. So this fish, sometimes the widest part of the fish will be down low, especially on a, on a heavy spawning fish or something that's got, got a lot in its digestive tract. This fish was fairly thin through the belly. Most of its weight was carried up high. So we're going to bring that through here. We'll bring it back down to center. And basically through the tail portion, the widest part is down through here. I'm going to do that on all four sides. Um, I already have one on the top, which was my center line. I'm going to do it on this side. And I'm also going to put a center line down here on the bottom just to help me um, with symmetry. Symmetry is probably one of the harder things there is to teach when it comes to uh, any part of taxidermy, but especially in the sculpting world. You can see I'm just bringing that to about center. And if if that line goes away, I know I've taken off, or I should at least be aware that I've taken off a fair amount of material. So I'm also going to square this up, which is where the, pe uh, the pelvic fins meet the body. Um, and I may square up the fin bases as well. And don't get alarmed if you sand away your center lines because you do have a little extra wiggle room because of the thickness of the skin. There we go. For those just tuning in, um, you are with Tom Matuska and Brett Wingfield and they are showing you carving fish bodies. You can ask your questions in the comments and they will ask, answer them along the way, so feel free to do that. Um, I'm gonna do one more thing real quick here before I start cutting. I am going to take out the soft dorsal, which sits on a little bit of a pedestal. Tom, can you show them that? This area here I know is the peak of my profile, but I also know it's very small. So I'm gonna quickly run my knife this way and this way. And I'm gonna take that piece out to leave just that, that portion. There I have that, just kind of roughed into place. I also have a couple of, another measurement that we took. If you remember last week, we said the width of the pelvic fins is fairly important. Um, and we put it down here at one inch. And that would be right there. So that's the greatest width of the pelvic fins. And that's important to us because basically everything in front of that, in that, in this portion of the fish in the breast area is, uh, is fairly flat. So I've, I've marked that here and everything from there forward will remain fairly flat. Now you can see the throat latch here. I'm going to transfer that little shape very narrow here. And then we start gaining width as we come out this way. So now I'll start taking corners down. Um, typically, the fish stays fairly flat through the caudal portion. There's a significant change of shape from the soft dorsal to the flat of the caudal. So I'm going to start, I'm going to stop my cut right here rather than come all the way off. So I'll start up here on top and I'm just going to take a pretty decent cut. And then just break that away. I could be like one of those two. Car the car ladies that have the car. So now, now I've got two corners there. I've got a little pedestal for the for the ventral fin. I'm going to take that away. I wonder if we can do this in under an hour. When we're laughing, we're not laughing at you. We're laughing. I just uh -huh. Uh -huh. Derek Wink said. <laughs> Tom, the fastest in the West. <laughs> <laughs> Bam saw her. 
Uh, hello. Raymond Brown says hello from the Gulf Coast of Alabama. Oh, wow. Thanks for the live videos. Oh, gosh. Thanks for watching them. Um, I'm just going to wrap out the throat patch here. Yeah, Mark is oh. watching, too. Oh, really? Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> So as Tom said, we're just going to kind of take off the four corners of this of this square body, like so, and we're going to start getting more and more fish shaped. So I'm going to carve that. If anybody's got any questions, please comment them, um, and we'll answer them as we go. Yep. Um, but I'm just going to keep you go ahead and keep working. Um, and as <laughs> we told you last week, what we're carving with is our uh, pound and a half density fish carving foam. It's actually very soft, it carves very easy. You can literally sand it with your hands. Um, it is kind of messy, you do get it all over there, foam dust. Um, sometimes if the foam dust really bothers you, um, a really good tip to keep yourself cleaner is use static guard like you get from the grocery store for your clothes. Dust your clothes and your hands with static guard and get foam dust will fall right to the floor. It's static really good. Guard. Static yeah. guard. I yeah. hate packaging foam. It's terrible. Static guard. Static Someone's guard. asking what's what foam do you prefer? You have the you see yeah. people use blue. Okay, I'll tell you the other one here. This is probably my, this is probably a oh I'm gonna say maybe a two pound density. And this is a flotation a flotation foam. It's made for docks. If you've ever seen um, floating docks, this is what's usually underneath. Less dust. If they call it, we sell it as dustless. They call it dustless foam. It carves reasonably easy. Um, it's a little more difficult to get it as smooth as the pound and a half density foam. Not quite as easy to work with, but much, much cleaner. Um, I think it's a little more expensive, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if I have the choice, I will go the messy route and use the pound and a half, you know, urethane foam. Is there one that's easier to carve? I'd say the yellow. Yeah, and this, yeah. another thing, you buy this as yellow today and we've been blessed with yellow foam, which when you, when you mount this inside your fish, your fish skin actually is, you know, slightly transparent and um, the color of your foam can show through. We have had purple foam, we've had blue foam, we've had pink foam, um, we've had gray foam, um, all different colors foam because this is made for the insulation industry, not for taxidermists. Most of the stuff we use isn't made for taxidermists. So when the industry turns lime green, you know, as a selling technique, we're going to have lime green fish carving foam. When we had colored foam, um, we resorted to painting it with latex paint. Um, with a flat white, something that dried real fast, so that when we put it into the fish skin, the color of the foam didn't, didn't show through. Um, the pink foam used to be a little bit of an advantage, sort of. Um, showed pink around the fins and things like that, kind of fleshy, but it also showed pinky where you didn't want it. The gray was terrible, it made uh, the fish gloomy, and you had to do a lot more painting. You couldn't, you had to block out the body, even though it was inside of the fish skin. And with the blue, I would paint the blue for sure. Yeah. So a lot of guys use the blue foam. Yeah. Uh, quite a few so what do you typically it. use to sand the foam? Um, I'm going to be to sanding here in just a minute. Um, Secret stuff. I think <laughs> there's just a few basic tools um, to fish carving, and one of them is a good sanding method. Um, we'll use everything from a, we'll start off with, with a good sharp paring knife or a fillet knife will work really good, um, especially for some of the big fish bodies to take off um, the big chunks that we're doing. You can see he's starting to round out just a little bit. Um, but this tool I think is one of your favorites. This is a cuts on um, file. I think we've talked about it before at one of our live feeds. Um, it's carbide. And I bought one of the first ones at a world show at a wood carving booth 20 some years ago. And this is by far my favorite tool in the shop for altering mannequins. Um, you know, carving fish, it works exceptional for carving foam. Comes in a, a coarse and a fine. I think even Two maybe. Two different sizes, six inch, eight inch, and coarse and fine. Uh, it's 
carbide and when it loads up, we use it on Bondo and everything, if it loads up with Bondo and it loses all of its grip, um, we soak it in lacquer thinner overnight, take a wire brush and it looks like it just came from the cut saw factory again. I mean, it's the best tool in the whole shop. And they make those little grinder bits too. We use all those too that yep. work in our Dremel tools and our Fordham tools. Oh, the rotary bits. Off. Yep, those little mm -hmm. rotary bits. Nate Ford, how much of an artist do you have to be to carve good? It looks fairly simple with the right direction. It is. It's easier than you think. It takes nothing but practice. Um, it's following measurements. You're going to, you know that that fish has to be, what, three and three eighths inch wide? You know it has to be six and an eighth inch tall. You're going to trace a pattern. Nothing different than a dressmaker, I'm thinking. Um, you're going to trace a pattern. What are you saying? Huh? What are you saying? <laughs> you can make dresses. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, and then you're going to look at the real fish and you're going to notice things. You're going to notice that under these pelvic fins, he has little pelvic fin pockets. You're going to notice that under the dorsal and the anal fin, he's got little mounds. And so you're going to start incorporating all that into your carving. And when you do it, you're going to do it wrong a lot. But even if you make an attempt, if it's not entirely exact, little by little, you're going to fine tune your system. Um, take off the four corners is a good start. Take off the corners, off his corners. And now all of a sudden, he's just doing little, little chips, you know, kind of little slices out of there. And all of a sudden, it's starting to take on the shape. We're starting to get a little bit fishy. And one thing we don't have here today, and we probably should have, is the real fish. Real fish. Um, carving with the real fish laying here in front of you on the table really, really helps you. Um, no matter what you, no matter what you've got a reference in front of you um, as to what you're trying to replicate. And I think that's probably the case for anything in taxidermy. Sure, sure, sure. The better the reference, the, the better you can do. And then as you're, as you're carving, take longer slices rather than a lot of people will do little dished out areas. Take longer slices. When we start sanding, we're going to take long sweeping sanding so we don't get divots and mounds. And once you know, have you ever used a hot wire styrofoam cutter? Kind of. I saw one. I was down at the hobby shop 20 some years ago and... I saw him cutting model airplane wings, and I thought that is the most miraculous tool I've ever seen in my life. It's a wire, almost like a bandsaw, but it doesn't move. Electric current goes through and it gets hot. You can take the white, like um, styrofoam, cooler styrofoam, and you can cut it out just like styrofoam on a bandsaw. So I said, well, that cut our fish foam. They said, bring us in some and I'll show you, or you'll see. So I brought in a chunk of foam, and they said, oh, that'll cut easy. And they started cutting it on the hot wire, and it burnt up their hot wire. And he said, oh, that never happened before. And, and evil green smoke comes out, like, like something you've never seen or smelled before, and burnt up his hot wire. So the guy puts on another hot wire. He said, this is a you know, zinc alloy, whatever, da, 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 hot wire. Put it on, burnt that one up too. Um, it does not work, unless you guys may know something that I don't know. Um, it didn't work on this type of foam. I do believe it will work on the blue. This is more of an open cell foam, and you might be able to get by with it on this type of foam. If it works, it's a very slick, slick process. How long does it take to carve an average bass body? Because you're kind of going, take it. Kind of going slow. Huh? <laughs> Thanks. We got to stretch this up to an hour, you know. Um, I should have been doing one too, just to see if I saw my fish draw and see what my carve would be. Your first one's going to take you forever. After you get really proficient, I would say you could have that card ready to mount um, 20 minutes maximum, you know. And that would be for your first test fit. Once you test fit it, you're going to fine tune it a little bit and maybe shave off a little more here and there. But 20 minutes, you should have something that looks pretty fishy. Yep. So here we've got basically everything roughed out. We've got an area right through here that you can see I haven't touched. Same on the top. All of my, all my critical lines are still there. And now I think I'm just going to start sure, doing sand. taking some of the, taking some of these square corners off. I'm going to start with the cuts all wrapped. And basically we're just going to try to get into a nice smooth shape.
you'll find that there are some key anatomy points and uh, references that, that you'll want to make sure and consider. They're fairly pointed over the back here, like so. Typical largemouth bass. There's things that take down your fish body fast, and there's things that are much more gradual. Um, typically, the more experience you get, and you get a lot of confidence, you're going to use your knife nearly to the end and do a lot, lot closer job with your knife with a little bit of experience. Another fairly aggressive method um, that takes it down pretty fast, like the knife would be the uh, little form rasp like these. Yeah. Uh, and then the file would be next. And then when you get real nervous, you get really close and you don't want to take off very much, then it's time to go through the, uh, the sanding pad. The sanding pad. Yeah. Um, at this point, um, I like to get in a couple anatomic features because they will significantly help our fit. And those are some little triangles if you're, I, we're not going to get too deep into into anatomy, but I know I've got some significant shape changes here over the soft dorsal. It'll flatten out back here. Everything here will be fairly, fairly pointed. Same thing's going to happen here. Remember, we marked the vent, which was here. Everything in the digestive and reproductive tract happens in front of that. So at this point, we know there's a significant anatomical change behind it. So we're going to mark that in place. And we've also got a little bit of an anatomical shape here at the ventral end. Everything changes here and here. And then we've also got some shape changes happening forward of the, of the pectoral fins. So if you can see those, I'm going to make sure that I don't sand those details out. Anatomic sounds explosive. <laughs> I mean, you can get right in there. You can get right in there really easy with that band. Yeah. Yeah. We used to sand all of our all of our foam like this. We used to take window screen and we cut a little oval of aluminum window screen and uh, that's all we have. we did that for years yeah. was the window screen. I think our, our foam was a little more like um, floral foam then too, wasn't it? Softer. A little dustier and softer. Ronald Patterson, what do you use to seal the carp fish body to get it ready to make a fiberglass mold? Ooh. Um, we like to prime our bodies. Um, you can use any kind of primer you'd like to. We use primers just out of a spray can. Mm -hmm. um, we also have some catalyzed primers um, that we'll use. Um, you can use things as simple and soft as um, joint compound. Mm -hmm. and several of them carved that way too. And that works pretty well. Yeah, if you, if you come up with a shape that you want to duplicate, um, just prime it, sand it, get all the imperfections out of it, and uh, wax it like crazy, and buff it off, and yeah. dam it, and make a fiberglass mold. Austin Brewer wants to know what type of foam we are using. We, they're carving on the number two density. This guy, which we sell in one billiard or two billiards. And then we also have the blue dust list behind that they talked about earlier. What are you two chatting about? Secret stuff. <laughs> that looks like just a hot mess over there. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little hot mess. Story of my life, man. 
It's the hot new vehicle you'll have. Foam dust in your steering wheel. Goes away somewhere. Always picking on Brett. <laughs> What if I want a wide open mouth or a closed mouth? That's a good point. Ooh, that is a good question. Um, I don't know if you remember, if you watched the um, live feed last week, but when you pose that fish to make your tracing, we use ear splitters on our, on our deer when we split deer ears. So we usually have ear splitters in the shop. We like to take, I like to take ear splitters, put them inside of his mouth to depress the tongue squeeze them, open the mouth to the desired height width, and then draw this throat latch accordingly because this will tend to go up and down, if I'm saying that right, um, go up and down with the open mouth. So if you trace him with a closed mouth, then when you mount him with an open mouth, you're gonna have a lot of loose skin down here. Could you just tell him that we're gonna have 18 inches of snow this weekend? That would make it depressed. We are. Supposed to have 18, 18 inches snow. of snow. So we, just, just, away. we just had a foot a couple days ago. The lady at Walmart today said 16 to 18 inches this weekend, which I think she's probably... Right on. I hey, <laughs> she looked like she stayed at home and listened to the news. But. <laughs> so wants to know is Brett working by the hour. Yeah, I know, I know. Now, here we go. He gets about 50 bucks an hour. Yeah. I can buy one of these for $19.95. Go figure. We're on the third one. <laughs> okay, Brent Dennison, if you over carve out some anatomical features, what kind of product or foam can you use to bring them back? Hi, Brent. Hi, Brent. Brent, that's a good one. Don't um, do it, first of all. Yeah. Why would you want to do that? <laughs> um, a couple of things you can do. Um, shall we show them repair? Do you have your Gorilla Glue? Some more. Um, <laughs> so this would kind of go along the lines of repairing a body if if we broke it. Sometimes or if we this is this is a walleye that's that's a customer mount, and sometimes as you're carving, you get a little kind of rammy. Oh no. I broke a customer <laughs> fish tail. Now, <laughs> now what am I gonna do? Now I'm worried. Um, so, let me grab some pins here. I wasn't ready for this little thing. We were gonna do this last week. But if you, Brent, if you were to overcarve or take a chunk out you didn't mean to, say you got this tail portion, you got everything else to fit really good, but you carved this too narrow, you could do just like Tom accidentally did. You could cut the tail off. You could attach a new piece of foam to this and start all over, start carving again. So I'm just gonna take Gorilla Glue, um, this happens to be the two times faster Gorilla Glue. Two times faster than what? Two times faster than the two times <laughs> slower stuff. <laughs> and I carve in the fish. <laughs> I'm going to put a little glue, Gorilla Glue on my fish tail. Coat the tail. I'm going to take the other portion. I'm going to take a little water. I'm gonna mist it with water. Gorilla Glue is actually foam. It's foam much the same as this is made up of. Relocate it, a clean break should locate right back where it was. I'm gonna pin it on here. Now you can use any kind of pins. You can use T-pins or you can use, uh, these are Euro pins. And within about an hour, within about an hour, that is going to be so strong that you can't can't tell that it's broken. Yep. And we sell yep. Gorilla Glue in two different styles. Yep. Different uh, styles. It's great, great stuff for connecting foam to foam. Joe yep. Martin says, well, first off, he says it's 68 there. Which, uh, <laughs> thanks, Joe. We're well, 68 get, here, too. We're supposed <laughs> to get hail tonight, followed by everything. 
But then he said Bondo. Bondo will work. Bondo does work. Um, Bondo is something that everybody's got in the shop that works pretty well. Um, the, the one thing I would say with Bondo is make sure if you repair that you leave the you leave it back from the seam just a little ways because you'll hit that hard spot. Um, and the, the change in density of the Bondo versus the foam can be a little bit tough to negotiate. So. So if you're using Bondo or any other hard uh, adhesive, I'd say be careful with that. Um, you can also alter a fish body. Mm -hmm. You can alter it just like you do a deer mannequin or a life-size mannequin. Um, and that Gorilla Glue works really well. Um, anywhere, just like on a, on a life-size animal, um, Anywhere along the spinal column that the animal can naturally bend, you can alter. You can take wedges out. And I've seen you do that a lot. Yep. Um, just cut a little V on this side and a relief cut on this side. And I always compare it to like those little snakes you get at Walmart up at the counter that, that you're holding mm -hmm. with the V's in them. And uh, just put your piece together, put a couple pins in there. You can foam it on the back, you know, like two-part urethane foam um, to fill in your gap. Little things you can play. You know, if you actually took down just a little bit of the belly, a little bit of clay is permissible. Just make sure that when you get your fish all sewn up and position in, that you don't lay that soft clay on the edge of the table and make a nice crease through the fish. And you're talking with the yellow number two density. Is that what you guys prefer? Shane Halston is wondering which foam you prefer in your shopping class. I like, I like this. I choose this. Um, I've done every one of my competition fish with this too. Mm -hmm. Number um, two. Yeah. Yep, it works well. Um, it's a little bit softer. You can, we'll probably go into attachments and connections sure. maybe in the next video. Um, but it's a really good solid uh, connection. It works out really well. Um, you can, al like I said, you can alter it. Um, every one of those real hard curved fish that I've done, I've done through alterations mm -hmm. and I'll just take my wedges out and put them back. Tim, have you ever cut out the top view first and then out the side profile? Yes, we even discussed that, showing that. Um, the more, the more curve you put in a fish like this, horizontal curve, this body actually becomes shorter than the fish laying down sideways. That's where the top profile would be. If you can if you can trace it nice and accurate, the top profile is very beneficial. If if we were putting a lot of curve in, I would want to do the top profile. And then for reference points, I would like to mark when he's curved in that curve, top of the head, uh, maybe the center of the eye, the glazing bone, the throat latch, your pelvic fins, uh, your vent, um, your dorsal and anal fan, as well as your tail. Um, and we do that especially on a shark bird. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That works really well. Um, I think I'm going to be all done with the cuts all and go into the sanding pad to take some of the. Some of the uh, going, back to my, on. going back to your 15 stuff, hot glue, Randy Wolf says hot glue question mark, meaning. But hot, hot glue will do it. It will do it. Um, the, the thing I've run into with hot glue is it's hot and it will melt your foam. <laughs> it's hot glue that's hot. I think Don Frank did an article on that one time. Uh, it will melt your foam. If I were using hot glue, they make hot glue guns with dual temperatures. They have a, a cool melt and a hot melt. I would use the softer temperature, otherwise, or the cooler temperature. Otherwise, when I plug in my hot glue gun, I use it the minute it starts getting molten, getting molten. That way it won't eat the craters in your foam. Put it together, and then the issue I've had with hot glue is if you put too much on, it oozes out the edge, and then when you're doing what Brett is now, sanding, hot glue doesn't sand the same as that soft foam does. But yes, it will work, and we've done it. Okay, how about mixing up two-part Euro foam to rebuild from Jig and Jim at 68? Yeah, uh, that'll work too. And then just remember that your foam that you mix is probably a harder density than this. So you're going to have to, as you sand, you're going to hit that harder foam in the seam. Yeah, be careful of that. Um, 
just the different densities of foam will make an issue for you if you're not careful. Um, but it does work. I think in, in the right hands, you could do any of these methods and a whole bunch more will certainly work well, for it. Here's the guy. Gorilla Glue. The Gorilla Glue is actually a foam, just like the foam he's carving. And you notice it is oozing out of my seam where I put plenty on, and it's starting to get pretty tacky. It'll probably take an hour before I can sand that. Even when I sand this, it's going to be slightly harder than this foam. But that's what it'll look like as it starts hardening. Chad Stewart wants to know if Brett's going to come out with a fish on rainbow or brown trout for him. Oh my gosh. you got to take me fishing first. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got to go to Maryland for the snakeheads. We had to request yep. that last year. Yeah. <laughs> um, See all these gray hairs? <laughs> We don't have much time. I don't think we have a lot of time. We have lots of ideas I'd love to. about what you yeah, It would be awesome. I, I'd love to. Um, we got to get this bass line taken care of and fill in some of the other ones. But oh, that's looking really nice. That's what it's kind of It's getting kind of fishy. It's kind of factory. Two hours later. I know. Thanks, <laughs> Mandy. Rob Levy, my daughter wants me to order some stuff so she gets candy. I like your daughter. <laughs> Call us up. <laughs> <laughs> Another quick little tip, um, we know the throat patch gets it's nice and tapered small here and so we don't have to make a repair. If you'll get it down to about so far and then take a piece of 14 gauge wire, maybe 4 or 5 inches long, sharpen it on one end, slide it in here, um, that will save some headaches later on and then it's really easy to carve and sand around. I've got to be careful right now because I don't have one in there um, so that I don't break it. But I'm getting real close. Um, now this would be the point where you would re reference the real fish and see what he looks like, kind of take some final measurements to shape um, and set him there. Um, I think that's probably as far as I want to go until we go a little further. And then something that, that I kind of watch for, give me a straight edge here, is even a flat, flat fish, for instance, like a crappie, watch, watch how, you know, that straight edge does not touch this fish really more than one point. Yeah. And a crappie is a very, very flat fish, but even when you take a straight edge to that crappie, um, there is a curvature there. So kind of watch your flat spots as you go. If you've still got a flat spot, that probably means you're going to have some shape issues. It's not a bad idea to take a couple of measurements. Um, out of curiosity, what did we have for a girth? An upside is, down fish. <laughs> um, um, you should have about 16 inches at your widest point, it looks like. Now is not the time to come up with 14. Right? Or, or say, oh, look at that, right on the button. 15 and 3 quarters back there, and we're going to go right up here. Now he's bright. This was our 16, and look at that. Now that's pretty lucky. That's that's lucky with experience. <laughs> um, I did not expect that. <laughs> um, now it's nice to skin your fish. Now yes. that you don't really need them anymore because you've got your anatomy, your anatomic explosions built in. <laughs> um, now skin your fish and start test fitting him yeah. and fine tuning this to your fish skin. Yeah. And oh. then in a couple weeks we're going to show them that, right? Sure. Yeah. Jim wants to know, do you remove fish head from the skin to remove more meat out? That's up to you. Um, you certainly can. Uh, you can remove it. You can use an artificial head. You can use the real head. Um, typically on a largemouth bass for a customer, I wouldn't. I, I don't. I don't. Um, but you can. You certainly can. You can remove all of the fins as well. Um, there's a little less damage in the skinning process, but um, I would say tailor your system to match to match what you're doing. If you had the art, if you had the head removed, it would be a good time right now to slide it on here. Or if you use an artificial head, yeah, now really good, time, right? good good idea to put that artificial head on and make all of your contours and shapes match mm -hmm. um, so it meets the body. If you have the artificial head, just make it slip right onto there where it's supposed to go yep. and sand this. Mm -hmm. To flow right onto the head yeah, works real well. Yep. Same same with your fin unions. You can put your artificial fins on here, sand the union so that once they're all put together, they 
that your skin goes over top and it's nice and smooth. And there's a lot of uh, discussion on artificial fans and, and artificial heads, and there's a lot of taxidermists um, going to all of those plastic parts and using only the, the skin itself on the real fish. Yeah. Um, it's called a hybrid. And I, yeah, hybrid. And I always, I always said we've kind of come full circle because I started doing this 40 years ago, and I would get sailfish and marlin in to repair that somebody had done down in Mexico and it was kind of interesting because they would have artificial heads, they would have masonite fins, and they'd have the real skin. So the Mexicans have been doing this for 40 years, and taxidermists are kind of starting doing it in the last few years here. Kind of interesting. We'll catch up. <laughs> um, we're getting toward the end of our hour, so we should probably, we had some uh, fun reviews, so we're gonna yeah. kind of do what we did last week and read through them. What are people saying? Uh, we have Matt Welsh. I was going to five star. I was going to buy stuff from them, but then I saw they only have 4.9 stars, and it's nothing but perfection for me. JK Matuska's is great. Five stars for me. I've got Brian Billings from West Olive, Michigan. Time for some candy. Thanks, Matuska Taxidermy Studio. Um, this is um, from Brad Grabber. Um, Eiders I did this year for the Minnesota Taxidermy Guild competition. I used Corey Carruthers bird heads from Matuska Taxidermy. Um, Wildlife Illusions bird products are the best in the world and you can't do better. Thanks a lot, Brad. Dylan Crawl, five star review. Douglas Rewinkle, five star review. Great products and great service. Tom and the gang are top notch. Wow. <laughs> I've got one from Ty Duncan. This one's kind of exciting. Thank you, Matuska Taxidermy for continuing to be the best taxidermy supply company I know of. Incredible products, unmatched customer service, and the friendliest group of people to ever do business with. Pictured below is a fresh mount I just did using their new, new, sure. new white tail change out head. Um, on an old meter form I had laying around in the shop. Can't say enough about how well the face fits. Deer mounted itself. I owe it all to the sculptors at Matuska's. I'm impressed to say the least. Thanks again, guys. I'm stoked to make my next order. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm told that Vicki Matuska loves cutting hair. Did she cut Brett's hair? <laughs> 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 it looks fantastic. Uh, she does she like, has many, many she times. Does like Thank you, Vicki. <laughs> um, she has. Um, Rick Dunlop, five stars. Great company to buy it from. Meet them at the World Show one year. Very friendly and helpful. Rustin Brooks, five stars, great products, great service, and awesome people. Dan Williams, five stars, top-notch service, always friendly and willing to go the extra mile to help you out. Dan Hudsick, absolutely love the products available from Matuska, great hey, people, with fantastic yeah. service, can't say enough about them. And Tim Stidham, five-star review, Matuska gets the job done every time I have Never had a bad experience with them, and they send good candy with each order. Here's <laughs> another one that says, from Brian Billings, another box of goodies came um, came in. Thanks, Matuska Taxidermy. Um, a couple composed choice deer forms. Great. Very cool. We just absolutely love, love feedback. So thanks so much, everybody, for doing that. Um, once again, we're still doing our um, Facebook supply giveaway for $500. And it's basically, you can go review, you can share our stuff, you can tag us in products that you use of ours, anything like that. Um, and they're tallying up some of our top ones. Bradley Grabber is like doing really good. Oh, yeah. Adam Lubenthal, Aaron Wolf, Brian Billings, Christopher Candace, Cole Cruikshank, Colton Stevens, Dakota Gold, Dan Williams, Dan Hudsick, Deborah Combs. Um, Dylan Crawl, Ryan Wolf, Jason Gray, Linda Shrews, Dan Williams. Um, you guys are doing good, so keep it up. It's over, is it June? June? Look at your flyer. That's a good idea. <laughs> June 30th is over, so you still have time to catch Mr. Plenty of time. Grabber. Um, we do have the Western Regional coming up next week. That's going to be fun. And that is in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque, New Mexico. So stop by and see us. We just sent out a whole bunch of stuff. They're going to be setting up a couple booths. So you can stop and talk to Vicki. She 
will be the one behind the booth while you are judging. She'll be yeah. the only one. You busy? So, so be a little patient with her. Oh. Uh, we're going to have some great sagebrush uh, series mule deer. Those have been going crazy. Rock out west. bases. Um, rock bases. Antelope. Antelope. Some really nice antelope. Double bear. Um, western species. Sydney Christmas bear. We're going to have some stuff a lot of you people probably haven't seen. Our top selling supplies. I believe I sent some eyeglasses that are still hey, yeah. selling off the shelf. Um, and I'll be wearing those to look at your fish. Yeah. Make sure and bring a couple fish for him. Make him earn his money. <laughs> um, another thing for that. Next week we won't be doing a live video here. This is really scary. This is really scary. This is really scary. We're going to try to teach my mom how to run a live video through the Western Regional Showroom. So, so if we have any volunteers who will be in Albuquerque, <laughs> they're <texting laughs> that know how to work Facebook. <laughs> That'd be great. But uh, we're gonna have her walk around and show everybody that next week. So tune in for that. It'll probably be Friday with Friday-ish instead of Thursday. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow's Friday the 13th. Oh my gosh. And our storms are starting. I had no idea. It mm -hmm. is Friday the 13th. I don't like that. Um, giveaway. What did you guys want to do for the giveaway? Oh yeah. I know the question. Okay. Oh, we're giving a cuts all wraps. Oh, right. Nice. Warning on this one. This cut, I'm not kidding you. If you people, this is like my favorite tool in the whole shop. And if you, I, I do the thing like the Iwata airbrush. If you buy an Iwata airbrush, I always tell people if I portrayed it wrong or if you don't think it lives up to as good as I told you it was, um, send it, clean it up, send it back. I'll do the same with the cut saw rasp. If you get it and use it for a couple months and think that you can get along without it, I'll take it back. We it gotta is, be wow. super careful with our giveaways. We should check. Well, we should check with Cindy first because it is that good. All of a sudden, everyone's calling on one, and then they're sold out. Sorry, but uh, no, call us in. It's a great product. It is a great. Even product. the they're little cool. rotary bits. I mean, there's a whole array of them. Cutting in septums, doing work on your deer. We use them. The production all over fish. the shop. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So your cool. question. And is the question cool. is, um, in the movie Nemo. Mm, Nemo. Nemo Dory was what kind of fish? And you need to be specific. Wow. Specific. You need to be. Why don't you display that, uh, what we're giving away here? And you get the used one. The <laughs> used We're going to open no. the one out. <laughs> what kind of fish was Dory? Ooh, Jay, Jason Racinger said he'll help her out. Oh good, show. you might need it. Hey, Jason, there you go. You. you have no idea. <laughs> I would appreciate that. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Dan Harley, be specific. Be specific. Be specific. You mean a blue fish? Oh, you're telling her? What? A you blue get... fish doesn't work? No. Um, Randy Wolf, yeah. be specific. Sp we led for be specific. Pup. Monica, Sp be specific. A cartoon Sp fish. Specific. <laughs> no? See, where did you even find the answer to this? Is Roger he... Dowling. Where's Roger Dowling? Where's Roger Dowling? Yes. Yeah. Roger would know this. Uh, One little Roger, help us out. out. You're so close. Ooh, don't forget to like the video too. And yeah, share like and share. Yep. For your yep. chance to win the $500 supply giveaway. I think last week is sitting at 8,300 views. Be awesome Rob. to get to 10,000. That's so we get it. Yeah. You got one? I think so. Uh, ooh. Kind of. Dan, right? Who did you have? Over here. Hold on, I gotta make sure it's on. Taking it right oh. out of his mouth. Is that, yeah, that is. Yep. You got it? Yeah. We Rob Levy. Rob Levy. Pacific, Pacific Regal Blue Tang. <laughs> That's what he's saying. He's specific. 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 Disney, Disney DreamWorks fish. <laughs> All right, Rob, you got a cuts all file coming to you. And you're gonna love it. Yeah. Yes, no matter what you do, yes, you I don't know. care if you do birds, fish, game heads, mammals. It's the best. Gonna be the best tool in your shop. Don't forget to uh, call us and place your orders. One eight hundred four eight eight three two five six, or visit us online at www.matuskataxidermy.com, and we would be happy to help you with your supply purchase or if you have any questions you can always ask for these two and they'll they're pretty good at the tech stuff. Bubbles. But
bubbles. Give us bubbles. some likes yeah. and hearts yeah. and all that fun Thank stuff. Thank you very much for doing this. This is just enlightening. When I learned, I had to teach myself fish carving, and it was a two-year process. And at the end of two years, um, they didn't look quite this good. So having somebody demonstrate for it, we didn't have YouTube then, we didn't have live feed, we didn't have computers. So they didn't this have is a round wheels. <laughs> it's a great ease. It's very helpful. I think Thank I can you. even do it now. Awesome. Thanks you guys for tuning in. We'll Thank see you, you next week much. at Thank the you. Western Regional Show.